Now, some close encounters of the ghoulish kind with Michael Cole. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome. Have you ever heard the blood-curdling scream of a young virgin as a vampire sinks his fangs into her neck, or seen a witch flying on a broomstick through the air? On today's show, we'll be joined by people who believe that vampires, ghosts and witches are alive and screaming. Our first guests are 20th century vampires who get sensual pleasure from bloodthirsty legends. Please welcome Pandora and Mick. Pandora, can I ask you first, what is so fascinating, so attractive about vampires for you? Do they make you feel unreal, uh, like nothing else in the world. Can you describe that feeling? Oh, it's a feeling of power and control and sensuality. Have you ever had your blood sucked by a vampire? Not by a vampire. By somebody else? Not recently. Not recently, but you went through this, uh, this process. Was it pleasant? What I had participated in was very pleasant. So what do vampire enthusiasts do when they're together? Well, the ones that I hang out with tend to drink and chat. Not blood, though. Okay, now, in the club, you wear very striking clothes, which we can all see. Obviously, the most famous thing about vampires is the incisor teeth. Does, does either of you have? Yes. Well, can we, can I have a look? I'm going to actually get my glasses out. Let's have a look at you, Mick. We haven't, oh, I see. Yeah, could you just give us the full dental? That's it. Let's sit back. Are you sitting comfortably? That's, are those really your teeth or are they, are they, um, crowns? They're not my teeth. They're, They're not your teeth. Hurts. Oh, my goodness. Yours are fantastic. That's amazing. Those aren't mine. They're not, they're not no. yours. But so you put these in just for your meetings and things of that kind. Special occasions. Mick, um, have you uh, sucked Pandora's blood? Um, not to my knowledge, not to my recollection. Would you like to? Um, that's something we'd have to discuss in some detail. <laughs> I imagine. Yeah. Isn't there a danger in this or is it just a bit of fun getting dressed up and, and, and make-believe? What we do is, for us, a fantasy. Um, as a vampire organisation, we're interested in cinema, literature, um, going to plays, all that kind of thing. Um, the business of dressing up, the business of wearing fangs, the way we look, the way we present ourselves is purely fantasy. Is it sexual fantasy, primarily? Um, I would say the power of the vampire is that the, the vampire is very sexy and very romantic. That's why we feel it's powerful. Does it happen um, that people do take these things too far and allow vampirism to take over their lives? I'm, I'm sure there are people who do take it far too seriously. And what happens? I mean, what, how, how does this show itself in extreme form? Well, some, some people will actually be prepared to say that they are a vampire. And, and that's a bit, um, well, a bit far-fetched, really. How, how can they be is the question, but they, they genuinely either believe that they are or they genuinely believe they want to be so much that they can't separate the reality from their fantasy, whereas we do very much separate reality and fantasy. Well, that's very interesting. Our next guest appertaining to that is a vampire hunter who came face to face with a tall, dark and evil figure in a North London cemetery. Please welcome now David. <laughs> Thank you. 
David, um, that night in that cemetery, what did you see? You're talking about Highgate Cemetery. I am talking about Highgate Cemetery some years ago when you made this uh, positive identification of a vampire. Describe him to us. Well, it was a tall figure, about maybe eight feet tall. And when I first witnessed it, I noticed that the area turned icy cold. Um, but what was most significant about it was it had glaring red eyes. <clears throat> and I should add that I wasn't the first person who saw it. It had been witnessed locally in Highgate for several months. And I decided to investigate. And I, when I actually went to Highgate Cemetery, I, I wasn't looking for it. But as I passed the top gate, something caught my eye and it was there. I don't know whether vampires or ghosts or poltergeists are interfering with us, but we have got a trouble with your mic. Uh, we will repair it, though, because uh, we are not cowed or intimidated by evil forces that may be around. <laughs> Do tell us more, because if I saw an eight-foot figure with red eyes, I think I'd run in the other direction. You actually try to investigate well, and I'm a psychic, catch him. I'm a psychic investigator. Mm -hmm. I investigate cases of unexplained phenomena all over the country. That was the first time I'd ever, ever seen anything of that nature. So you believe that they actually exist, unlike our other two no, guests? No, no, no. I do not believe in blood-sucking vampires. I don't believe in the sort of vampire that stepped out of a Hammer horror, horror movie. But I do believe that there can be malignant entities which under certain conditions can remain earthbound. And I think that's just what I actually witnessed at Highgate Cemetery. Do these things take human form, or are they humans who take on supernatural form? No, 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 no. I don't think ghosts have got any intelligence as such, but a very, very small, if you like, percentage of unexplained phenomena. Do you have any um, photographic evidence of this at all? No, and I never, I have never claimed to have had any. How do, how are we supposed to believe that it's true then? Well, we had people in Highgate Cemetery stationed there with cameras trying to get photographic evidence and when I conduct a, an investigation I should just perhaps tell you the first thing I always do is look for a logical explanation as I said other people had seen this entity at Highgate and it was merely confirmed to me that that's why I'm sure it exists have you ever caught a vampire or what you think is a vampire the simple answer to that is no um, you can't really catch something that you don't believe in um, but you do spend a lot of your time investigating things you don't really believe in but you do think there's something worth investigating yes but I st still do not believe in vampires I mean what happened at Highgate Cemetery was that we spent we went into the Highgate Cemetery one evening with a with a medium and we were attempting to make psychic communication with whatever it was was there but unfortunately that vigil was interrupted by the police and I ended up in court <laughs> well if this is really true I ended up in court charged with hunting a vampire <laughs> now that is not my terminology that was the terminology that the police attributed to me I explained in court that it was part of a serious psychic investigation and it was just as akin to hunt, hunt vampires as it was for some to spend vast sums of money trying to locate the Loch Ness Monster. Well, you in fact uh, paid the price for that and uh, in fact you had a custodial sentence. But let's leave that aside for just a moment because our Can next guest you? believes that if you do delve into the darkness of vampirism, you open the door to the devil. Please welcome George. George, how dangerous is what you've just heard described? Well, what David's just been describing can be very dangerous indeed, unfortunately, because if you play with the occult, you can end up in a lot of trouble. You can end up with psychological disturbance. You can end up hardening your heart against the true God who exists and who cares for us and who loves us. Now, uh, I don't know all the details of what David actually got up to, but I do know that if you play with this sort of thing, then it can it can prove to be dangerous. You've got to be careful here. You mustn't be, go too, 
too much to one extreme or the other. What about Pandora and Mick? Because they say it's just a bit of uh, reasonably harmless fun, although she's half confessed that she's had her blood sucked, which sounds rather <laughs> painful to me. I mean, is this in its nature dangerous as well? Well, I don't think it's the harmless fun that uh, Pandora wants to say it is, because one is surely living in a dream world. I mean, she may say that vampires don't actually exist, but one is actually living in a dream world. And we're not called to live in a dream world, we're called to live in the real world, with our feet very much on the ground. I'm also a, a psychic investigator. Me and my partner run a club that help people that have spirits earth, earthbound trapped in their houses. Um, I wanted to ask, I'm sorry, David, 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 did you not get permission to do your investigation in the cemetery in the first place? No. no so obviously that's why the police were involved. And can I ask you, I'm sorry, you, you sound like George. a sceptic, George. What is actually your, your role? What, what exactly do you do? Oh, I'm a minister in the Church of England. And George, you do actually exercise spirits, don't you? So you've been involved in some exorcism. Well, we, we, we have never come across anybody in the church, whatever denomination, that, that would accept and believe in spirits, yet you believe in the Holy Ghost and things like that. Do you actually believe in ghosts yourself? I, I don't believe in ghosts as people describe ghosts, but I believe that people are actually perhaps experiencing something to do with the devil. It, the devil is pretending to be somebody's aunt or somebody's uh, who was murdered in some such place at some such time in the, in, in the past or something like that. I, th I think you've got to be very careful here because there is a spirit world. There's no question about that. There is a world of evil spirits. No question about that at all. But you mustn't be seeing devils where there aren't devils because we're very capable of auto-suggestion. We can delude ourselves. We can dream. Dreams. Our imaginations can run riot. So you've got to looks at things extremely carefully but there's no question about it if you dabble in things associated with the occult you may be in for some very rude surprises so, and some very rude consequences so george says there are evil spirits in part two we'll hear the strange tale of the ghost in the bedroom join us then